All right, piss and vinegar day 59. Le- uh, accessory day, or no, arm wrestling day rather. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Arm wrestling day, but the 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 way it pans out is I do leg days on like Wednesday. Arm wrestling day is Saturday. So I have kind of three days in between uh, where I can potentially add a little bit more volume or a bit more, another squat, uh, a few sets of squats in order to get a bit more efficient at the squats. So... Obviously, I can't do two legs days because I do intensity and you, you need at least seven days to recover. But because I'm pretty weak right now with the squats, I'm only squatting about 117, 120 kilos, I can kind of squat a little bit more frequently. Now, obviously, if I was a 180 kilo squatter, I could only do it once a week with high intensity. But I don't train my squats to failure. I do uh, three sets of five. And I might even start doing five by five. But Right now what I'm doing is I'm doing three sets of five on my leg day because doing five by five plus three by five on my uh, deadlift plus then sets of leg extensions and belt squats and shit to failure. That's just too much stuff to do. The leg day is too long. It's too difficult. So the way I'm doing this is to, in order to get more volume for my squat, which is weak and needs linear progression, thus I don't train it to failure. And also you can't squat to failure safely as you'll see in a minute actually. Um, I do volume squats. Now, obviously, when when I'm like 160, 180 kilo squatter again, then I will start doing more squats to failure, in which case I might get the safety pins out and use a safety squat bar and fail safely. But right now, I'm doing volume in order to progressively overload because with 5x5 five five or 3x5, five, you can realistically, with the correct amount of calories and if you're at a certain level of strength and the linear progression is still there to come, you can gain, you know, two and a half kilos every session. I didn't this this session because you'll see in a second. I just I couldn't I couldn't do it today. My back was hurting and I just misgrooved and my head was in it. But um, if if you're kind of a novice level of strength on your squat and, and a deadlift especially because there's so many muscles moving, so many prime movers, you can add two and a half kilos every session as so long as you're doing adequate uh, volume and uh, intensity level. You can't go too intense, obviously. So that's the idea here is Wednesday I do my leg day and then on Sunday or Saturday rather I do another squat day for two sets of five very little volume two sets of five to see if I can gain another two and a half kilos that session if if the the weight that I was using on Monday feels super light then I know I'm it's time to progress for sure the next week but also I might be able to progress that Sunday or Saturday when I'm doing the arm wrestling day when I do the squats at the start so the idea is I could potentially add five kilos a week to my squat, and if, at, but at the very least, it's to gauge whether or not next week I'll be able to just go up to 120, because right now I'm doing 117. Now, this gave me a very good uh, idea that next week I will in fact not be able to progress up to 120 kilos, because you'll see in a second, this shit did not plan out well. It was moving well, and then I, I think it might have just been a missed groove, but it was feeling pretty heavy. And I haven't done a box squat in about three weeks because I've been doing these fucking hack squat, uh, belt squat variation because I've been experimenting with the leverage machine I built. But I'll be back into this uh, kind of box squat routine every single week from now on. And yeah, here, I think I fail. I can't get back up. I miss groove. It just doesn't work. And this is the beauty of the, of the uh, box squat is I can now just sit here for 30 seconds, 40 seconds, and then get it back up if if i still couldn't get it back up i would just drop it off my shoulders no problem um so that's part of why i like box squats is you can safely fail i rest 30 seconds let my legs rejuvenate for a second squat back up and that was it i just did one set i'm supposed to do two sets uh, but i only did one because that was just not working out but that's the whole idea is next week hopefully i'll do 117 wednesday it'll feel really smooth friday by by the time saturday comes around I'll do it again. If it feels super easy, then I might even up the weight there. If not, I'll know it's at least it's a it's a, basically it's to gauge whether or not I can progress the next week, or if I can get, potentially progress twice in the week, or if I have to not progress at all, as I found out today. So that's the whole idea behind it: getting a bit more volume in for a novice strength lift, lift where I am novicely strong and need to do a bit more volume and frequency in order to get the linear progression out of the way to get back into the intermediate and advanced stage with my legs because they are very weak right now. So now I'm moving on to arm wrestling. Now, doing my side pressure 
And today I'm officially at a, a uh, tournament competitive level, according to Todd Hutchins, the man himself. He is under the belief that if you can do side pressure, a one rep max, mind you, side pressure lift 45 kilos or 100 pounds, you are ready to arm wrestle in like a uh, an open weight category sort of thing. Like it's there's novice arm wrestling tournaments and, and beginners, and then there's just you know anything goes. You have elites, professionals, average dudes, but people who are efficient enough to get in there and really bang. And um, yeah, my eye side pressure is at that now because this is only 40 kilos. It's not 45, but I'm doing sets of five and there's plenty in the tank. I could realistically probably one rep max 50 kilos. So my side pressure is uh, getting kind of pretty elite really for my body weight and uh, training experience. I've only been arm wrestling for like two or three years and I've only been doing arm uh, side pressure for maybe six to eight months. I don't know, maybe a year. I don't know. It, it, anywhere between six to months to a year now I've been doing side pressure. But my side pressure strength's really good. My hand's not even close to being at the same level as my side pressure, but that's to be expen expected with these very small hands. Um, but yeah, that that was cool to find, to remember that. I remember Todd Hutchinson saying that 45 kilos or 100 pounds and you are ready to arm wrestle professional arm wrestlers, uh, at least with your side pressure. Obviously, my hand would be fucking destroyed by a professional arm wrestler. But if we went into a hook or something where it was bicep and side pressure driven, I could probably hang, which is good to know. Um, so yeah, uh, and then I'm doing my cupping. So my cupping, like relative to my side pressure is fucked. Like this is only 25 kilos, uh, higher reps. I mean, you know, my the thing is, the numbers that you lift as an arm wrestler aren't necessarily indicative of how you will do on the table. Because again, like, I, uh, my cupping strength isn't that bad. It's actually pretty good, but it's relative to my hand size. So my hands are strong, but in arm wrestling, it's a leverage sport. So you could have, I could have like tremendously strong uh, cupping strength with my fingers and wrists. And then I get into a hook with a guy who has like nine inch hands and he could be half as strong as me, but the leverage is make him double as strong as me, if that makes any sense. And if you don't know what arm, if you don't know anything about arm wrestling, that probably makes even less sense. But for you guys watching who do like arm wrestling, you've probably seen this before. Like Devin Lerat is the perfect example. Um, he isn't, you know, he's strong by all means. He's incredibly strong, but you pair him up against a guy like Dave Chafee, who is way, way stronger fundamentally. His, his wrist and pronation is just far, far stronger. He's a giant, uh, meathead, but he hasn't got the leverages that Devin has. He hasn't got those nine and a half inch hands that just like snake over your average hands, and it mitigates all the strength that that guy Dave Chasey, Ch Chafee now has. So in arm wrestling, yeah, you could be tremendously strong, but if you don't have the leverages, it doesn't mean anything. It's it's like um, for guy for a layman's perspective, it's like if you had really really brutally strong hamstrings and glutes and, and quads but you had like two feet long arms like if you had like uh, no not even let's say you let's yeah let's say you have let's say like to really uh exaggerate it let's say you had like one foot long arms like you had just freakishly short arms you could have the strongest legs in the fucking world but if your arms are only like a foot long, you're not going to be a deadlifter. You're not going to be at a deadlift the same weight as someone who has half the strength in their quads, hamstrings, and glutes, but has, let's say, uh, three feet long arms. They Their range of motion is going to be so much shorter that even though they're half the strength, they'll output twice the amount of uh, strength output because the leverages are vastly superior. Or if it was a bench press, you could have three times stronger chest than some dude who just happens to have incredibly short arms. If you had those one foot long arms as a bench presser, you'd have a freakishly strong bench press because your fucking range of motion would only be like half a foot. Um, so the same thing with arm wrestling. If someone has twice your strength, but half your leverage, then you could probably still beat them, which is a long way of me explaining how my short arms and terribly short fingers give me fuck all chance against a guy who has very long arms and very long hands so i have to get really strong at side pressure so 
Anyway, that, I hope that makes sense. Um, this this was a real mind fuck for me when I first started arm wrestling people in pubs. I would go up to dudes and arm wrestle in pubs, and you know this this like four years ago I was 105 kilos. I was 106 kilo, 165 kilo bench presser. Like I was a strong novice power lifter of sorts. Like I wasn't you know advanced or anything, but I was very very strong. Um, and I you know I was doing heavy body weight chin ups. Like I was just fu- fundamentally very strong. And yet I would arm wrestle dudes in pubs who just had like long hands and long arms and they would crush me because one, I didn't know any technique. Two, I didn't have any like arm wrestling specific strength. But three, I didn't understand that like these leverages would change everything. Like both of us, neither of us knew what we were doing. They didn't know how to arm wrestle. They didn't know any techniques. They didn't have any arm wrestling specific strength. But like because they had really long hands, they would just get crushed and really long arms, I get crushed and I'd be like, What the fuck's going on? Like this dude's a twink, but they're crushing me and it's it's because of those leverages. Like you have to it, it's you know, you, you gotta pick your parents wisely. As Arthur Jones once sent uh, said about arm wrestling uh, sorry, bodybuilding. Someone once asked the great Arthur Jones, who was the grandfather of high intensity training, a true genius, someone asked him, you know, how do I get into bodybuilding? And he's just very quickly and plainly said in his way, uh, you have to pick your parents very wisely. And it's true. Like most sports, especially sports like arm wrestling and bodybuilding, where it's so bone structure related, insertion related, you, you have no other choice than to pick your parents wisely. You have to have good genetic stock for that sport. And if you don't have it, it's an uphill battle. I mean, it's not to say that especially with arm wrestling like it's not to say that if you're not a genetic freak you can't be a professional arm wrestler like my favorite arm wrestler is todd hudgings because he is not a genetic freak he's five foot ten he's an old man the dude's fucking 60 and yet he crushes these like long levered big hand freaks with side pressure which is a huge inspiration to me as a guy who's taller actually i'm taller than todd hudgings but he has bigger hands but i'm in the same boat where it's like i'm not I'm nothing special genetically in arm wrestling. I have very small hands. I don't have any crazy long arms or anything. So I see him and I go, wow, that's an inspiration. He found some sort of cheat code where it's like he just, ha- he, his hand was never going to compete with a Devin Laratz, but his elbow can and he can send it real hard into your elbow and just crush you with that fundamental side pressure strength. So huge inspiration in Todd Hutchings. And, uh, and that's why I, I was kind of stoked today when I did that. A 40 kilo benchmark with the side pressure it's, it's it'll be interesting to see where i can get to i want to get my side pressure up to like 80 kilos or something freakish i think todd's strongest side pressure lift is like 70 kilos um and again how these strengths translate to the table it will change because there are people like uh lachlan adair or ryan bowen who are two very great australian arm wrestlers who have actually fundamentally stronger side pressure on in in as far as the weights go like they can side press they can do more side pressure than todd with the cable stack right but you put them on a table and it doesn't translate the same way like there is a difference when you put your hand against another man's hand and all the different biomechanics that come with that what you can do with the cable stack isn't necessarily going to be indicative even with something as fundamental as side pressure where the hand and and uh, all that doesn't come into account as much. It still doesn't translate clearly because Todd's side pressure still manifests way higher when he's on the table uh, than it does on the cable stack because his cable stack's obviously still elite. 70 kilo side pressure is fucking immense. But there are people out there who, again, do more than that and yet he crushes them on the table with their side pressure. It would look, it would, when he arm wrestles them on the table, it would look like these people are, are half as strong with the cable stack and yet they're not. So the weights will lie. There is so much technique. There are so many biomechanics that go into arm wrestling. You can't always go with the weights. Uh, as evident, again, with Ermi's Gasparini and Devin Larat recently, uh, Ermi's every single fundamental strength is stronger with the kale stack than Devin's. And yet Dave, Devin fucking toyed with him. He made him look weak. Um, so... Yeah, the, the, the cables are only to approximate your strength. That's what uh, Todd Hodgson says. The real strength, the real technique, the way you push that strength that you get in the gym is on the table, which unfortunately I don't get a lot of 
because uh, I live in a re pretty remote area where there's not many arm wrestlers around me. There's like one or two, but I haven't got a table and I've been lazy and I've, I haven't had time to really hit these people up and arm wrestle them. But I'll have to get down to Penrith, which is like an hour away from me and start uh, pulling with some professionals, I guess. Anyway, yeah, long-winded arm wrestling talk today. This content probably isn't for you guys who are interested in bodybuilding, but for the niche audience who are into bodybuilding and arm wrestling or just arm wrestling, you might enjoy these days. Anyway, see you guys tomorrow for more uh, piss and vinegar. Bye-bye.